Could the multiverse be returning in Call of Duty Zombies within the Dark Aether timeline? Could this be Treg's grand scheme to incorporate multiple Earths into the Dark Aether story, allowing for much more variation in storytelling? This is the theory I want to unveil in this video. Do you remember back in Black Ops 1, during the days of the release of Moon, when people discovered an interesting quirk of the Area 51 skybox during the Easter Egg? We could see the Earth from a part of the map that was supposedly on the Earth. Discussions about whether or not this was intended lore, or simply a visual glitch would continue for years, even up to Moon's re-release in Zombies Chronicles. As they never amended this, the implications of this at the time felt huge, yet arguments seemed to bear no fruit. The current consensus is that it was a visual glitch originally, and returned in Chronicles as a nod slash reference to the original glitch. Well, as loops, cycles, and the same things happening in repeat are core to Zombies' themes, it is no surprise we once again find ourselves at the doorstep of this discussion. In the newly released marketing for Modern Warfare Zombies Season 3, we see a preview image of the new Dark Aether Rift. At first glance, it seems aesthetically similar to some of the prior rifts, until you notice the quite interesting skybox. In it, we see a large ring of debris that we are likely standing on a meteorite of, and that ring is floating around a familiar planet, what seems to be Earth, or at the very least, a planet very similar to Earth. And this time, it's definitely intentional. At first glance, it is explained away by some facts from Vanguard Zombies' lore. We know in the ancient history of the Dark Aether that the fourth Archon used the construct to destroy Earth's moon. One would assume then, just as the large rocks in the Cortifex boss fight were, these two are chunks of the moon. After all, according to new research by NASA and its partners, Saturn's rings could have evolved from the debris of two icy moons that collided and shattered a few hundred million years ago. And while that would be a reasonable assumption to make, that leads to a further question. Why is a locale from Earth on a meteorite orbiting Earth in the Dark Aether? Did the moon have earthly locales on it prior to its destruction, or do they form copying Earth later? These questions lead to an interesting conclusion. Before we get there, however, we first need to go over what we already know about the Dark Aether and its celestial bodies. Evidence suggests their universe may not be structurally similar to ours in ways we would assume, and they are not just a one-to-one -one mirror, and that just because we go to a planet that looks like Earth, it may not be. There are a couple of mentions of other planets and a single use of the word Earth in Vanguard. Let's break those down. That farm with the windmill, the one in Mervie, France, doesn't look very important, does it, Cortifex? To me, Wolfram, nothing about your world looks particularly important. Earth is just a stepping stone to my eventual triumph back in the Dark Aether. I help you here, you help me get back. The rest is just details. Fair enough. But do you know what transpired near that windmill during our last global conflict? The Great War, we called it. The war to end all wars. <sighs> Such optimism. Is there a point to this, Wolfram? Indeed there is. The First World War pitted outmoded tactics against unprecedented weaponry. In just one day at that farm, 10,000 men fell as they marched in ranks directly into machine gun fire. Ah, that explains it. So much blood spilled all at once. It left its mark on the veil that separates us from the Dark Aether. Precisely. The weak spot we are trying to exploit. And the dead who fell that day. All those thousands of corpses. <sighs> they are buried nearby. Oh, not for long. Here, we see Cortifex use the term Earth, but specifically refer to our world. Notice his verbiage here, a lack of your in the phrase. He does not call it our version of Earth, simply Earth. This would imply that the creatures of the Dark Aether do not refer to their home planet as Earth. We simply assumed it as such because any places we interacted with initially were Dark Aether recreations of Earth's locales. For example, on D-Machine, the map in the Dark Aether is literally exactly the same 
came with some minor alterations, mostly aesthetic, and changes in gravity and distortions. There is another Court Effects and Wolfram dialogue to highlight. Wolfram, you remind me of someone I knew long ago. He was a pharaoh in the land of the Nile. He saw himself as a god and everyone around him as vermin. In fact, he was delightfully cruel. But you, Oberfuhrer Wolfram von Liszt, are of rare and special find. You have the blackest heart I have ever encountered in a human. You might have been royalty where I come from, had you not been born on this prophetic ball of dust. I tell you this not to flatter you, but because I expect the world from you, and you will deliver it unto me. This power I grant you is not something I would share with just anyone. But I am willing to see your dreams fulfilled and your enemies crushed. For you are a worthy vessel. You are the instrument of my revenge. This statement is very interesting. Cortefix says, You may have been royalty where I came from had you not been born on this pathetic ball of dust. You can take this two ways. Either Cortefix means our world when he says pathetic ball of dust and the Dark Ether's world is not considered an Earth. It simply copies parts of places it comes into contact with or Cortefix is from another planet entirely and there are other populated worlds in the Dark Ether. I answer with, why not both? I theorize that the Dark Ether does indeed have other planets planets, but not in the traditional way we view them. I believe that, through copying more and more locations and distorting them, and absorbing the Aether's multiverse of content, at the end of Tag to Totem, literally everything from the old multiverse was thrown in there, the Dark Aether is a universe that is essentially populated by distorted copies of planet Earth over and over again, rather than Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, or other celestial bodies existing throughout space. There are simply more Earths. Perhaps some are entirely one-to-one -one versions of older Earths we have seen in the prior Aether storyline, or even some sort of combination of our current Earth and an old location copied together. The Dark Aether has the ability to duplicate matter and create copies of locations on Earth, especially where breaches are strong. This means there can be many variations of Earth within the Dark Aether universe, thrown in there from the old multiverse, and potentially other planets too, although I would assume we likely will be staying grounded on Earth, although maybe we could venture off in the future. Just because assets-wise it's much easier, of course, to use similar assets as they are using within the multiplayer campaign and warzone sides of the game as well, than creating brand new entirely unique assets for otherworldly locations that are very unheard of in Call of Duty, apart from Infinite Warfare and of course the Moon Zombies map. But if this is true, this opens up a world of possibilities for Treyarch's writing team. They can not only justify one-to-one -one remakes of classic Zombies maps within the story, but also justify entirely new and wild locations for the characters to visit. You could have Earths with vast vastly different histories, all floating around in the same universe. This gives the chance for them to take all of the benefits of large-scale time-travelling slash multiverse travelling storyline without any of the real hang-ups that held the prior story back. Instead of time travel and having to justify that, you can simply go to a new Earth that is suspended in a different period of time than the past one within the Dark Aether. This allows them to have greater map variety that many claim was lacking within Black Ops Cold War, and it allows them to jump about in eras without them having to create some sort of convoluted storyline like the old Ether timeline was. And this way as well, they can jump about in different eras and periods and alternative histories and even in the future without them having to think about the regular Call of Duty timeline universe because right now Call of Duty is in a unified universe. And the problem with that is that they have to make zombies very grounded because they can't really interrupt what is going on in those stories. They can't have a massive world altering event, for example, which hinders their creativity 
ability when it comes to zombie map locations, but if we go to a dark ether location that's some sort of alternative version of Earth, they can go to the weird and wacky places without it needing to make sense within the wider Call of Duty universe. The worlds created here are not necessarily bound to Earths from the classic story we have seen or been to before. They don't have to be remasters, there are a near infinite number of universes in the classic ether storyline according to the paper scrap documents from Black Ops 3. This presents an opportunity to create fantastically different Earths from alternative or changed histories to ours, preserved at whatever point in time they fell into the dark ether. Essentially, Trey can send the characters to any place, any time, even ones that don't exist yet. And man would this be so so cool. And this makes complete sense, we know that for example Zykov stumbled along futuristic objects within the dark ether. And of course time works differently in the dark ether, but this can be explained away without any sort of time distortion, but simply that many different universes and versions of Earth were thrown into the dark ether. And so these futuristic items that he stumbled upon could have literally just come from a different version of Earth than the current one that had a lot more advanced technology, leading to infinite possibilities to explore within the dark ether. And like I said, this would also be a cool way for us to see remakes, for example, bringing back Transit or other maps, but dark ether versions that can even be different to their originals from some other universe. Essentially, this gives them the freedom they had within the old multiverse, where essentially they have infinite possibilities within the dark ether in terms of time, era, atmosphere, but they are not restricted by the fact that this can end up creating a convoluted storyline or messing up the Call of Duty universe, primarily the stuff that happens in the campaigns. This can all be very much self-contained while still having that freedom. It also gives Treyarch the ability to soft reset the culture of the dark ether and return the mystery and intrigue that was set up with Cold War's Lovecraftian and incomprehensible dark ether. While the lore and backstory to the dark ether in Vanguard was cool at the time, it has had far-reaching consequences on what the dark ether is to the storyline and how it feels to go there. By expanding the universe in such a way as this, they have the ability to create more Earths with more stories rather than being stuck to the far-reaching history they created without much benefit in Vanguard. There can be planets populated by humans or different creatures to the ones in Vanguard, giving us a chance to see tons of varied cultures and aesthetics across zombies. And for the matter of travelling between planets, we have really not seen enough of the dark ether outside of its Earth to know what space travel would look like there. One thing we have seen is that in the Vanguard depiction of the dark ether, we see two suns shown. Back during Cold War, due to some art on various calling cards and intel that mentioned Ethereum replacing oxygen in the dark ether, we theorised it could very well be possible to breathe in space within the dark ether, literally anywhere, and simply moving between two planets would be entirely possible. The discussion at the time was part of theorising that we might have ended up on the moon in Cold War's dark ether, but with learning in Vanguard the dark ether moon was destroyed, the purpose of the oxygen replacement has shifted. Before, I was speculating in videos about us going to other planets, Planets. And especially within some sort of outbreak open world mode, I think that would be so cool. But I just think it's a bit unrealistic because, like I said before, it requires a lot more effort and development time to build those worlds. And whilst it would be very cool for them to do, it does seem a bit unlikely, at least for a large scale map, and maybe a one off we could see us go to another planet. But I think the more likely option is we just see multiple variants of Earth. But who knows, maybe if they get a bigger budget in the future, or even just as a one off, we could explore some other planets. We, as the fans, have gotten comfortable with what the Dark Aether is like, and no longer are maps set in the Dark Aether particularly interesting, especially because the atmospheres have kind of remained the same. We've been getting these reused Almazra locations within Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, and yes, the skybox is cool, and yes, it's still endearing, but it kind of is getting repetitive now. And like we saw within Vanguard, they can give us completely different aesthetics within the Dark Aether because it is so huge and vast, they don't have to just keep to this one particular purple crystalline aesthetic. And we can venture to different versions of the Earth. And again, this gives more credence to the fact that within this preview image for the Season 3 Dark Aether section, because it is just a section from Warzone in Almazra, we know it exists within the regular Earth, which seems to suggest that within the Dark Aether, there are probably multiple versions of the Earth, which explains as to why it seems that there are asteroids and broken up pieces of Almazra floating around the Earth. This can just be one version, which just so happens to also share with the Modern Warfare story. And one big thing is that within the Call of Duty Zombies community, people continuously ask for the return of the old story. More so, they want Ultimus and Primus to return, but what I think they also want is the scope of it, more interesting and wild locations and time settings with wildly different characters than what we are seeing in the campaigns on multiplayer. 
there. Creating this giant quote unquote multiverse playground of Earths within the Dark Aether is the solution to all of these problems, and one I believe the writing department at Treyarch are in the process of enacting. The last and perhaps greatest chance that this gives the team at Treyarch is an ability to solve what I believe has been the largest issue for them in writing the current era of story. Like I said before, staying tangential to the campaigns without breaking the law. Ever since Black Ops Cold War, the story has been directly connected to the campaign of whatever game it ships with. It will be set in a similar time period, with campaign characters returning as operators. Issues with the operator system aside, this makes it difficult to create bombastic set pieces or storyline events in Zombies because you cannot drastically change the campaign narrative. You can't create utter chaos in the world. As an example, Kravchenko still had to end up where he is in Black Ops 2 because that has already happened. So that had to be something in mind when they were writing the story on Forsaken. There also cannot be any very large scale outbreaks or destruction in major cities because that stuff would be recorded in history and severely change the world that the connected Call of Duty campaigns take place in. In Cold War they did a very good job with trying to write this away in covering up a lot of these incidents that Omega and Requiem were involved in, particularly Richtofen played a major role in covering up a lot of these events, for example what happened at Mauer de Toten, and giving fake cover stories, whether it be some sort of nuclear power plant exploding, or there being toxic waste in the area, whatever the case may be, they wrote it away, but with this idea in mind, they wouldn't need to ensure that there are these write-arounds whenever they do do any big things in the world. While the union of Call of Duty has definitely made the campaigns and their characters more interesting and intertwined, Zombies' storyline has surely been held back by this. This, along with rampant demands for asset reuse, has also led to many of the current Zombies maps being reused locales from the multiplayer and campaign, especially within Modern Warfare 3. However, with clever utilisation of these and multiple Earths in the Dark Aether, much more varied and interesting locales can be implemented still using reused assets. Trey could return to the classic Zombies map design philosophy and craft unique locales out of interesting assets reused from across their current and prior modes, but given a Dark Aether tint. If the story was set planet hopping across the Dark Aether, rather than simply going into or interacting with the Dark Aether from the current campaign's era, it allows for a much more wild and bombastic storyline, while still technically connected to the COD universe. We could fight zombies in infected major cities, and see entire continents blown up, while still not damaging the connected campaign's continuity. The shift towards exploring the multiverse and multiple Earths not only enriches the storytelling potential of COD zombies, but also empowers players to engage with a more layered and intricate narrative tapestry. By delving into the mysteries of the Dark Aether's interconnected realities, fans are invited to unravel hidden secrets, decipher cryptic clues, and speculate on the implications of traversing diverse Earth iterations. This narrative complexity not only deepens player immersion, but also encourages active participation in piecing together the larger puzzle of the Zombies universe, fostering a sense of discovery and ownership over the evolving storyline. By emphasising the interactive nature of storytelling within the multiverse framework and highlighting the symbiotic relationship between between narrative depth and player engagement, Treyarch's strategic narrative shift opens the door to more dynamic and player-driven Zombies experiences that transcends the current Zombies' narrative traditions and tendencies. So what do you guys think? Is this video's theory the first step into a major shift in COD Zombies' tone and storytelling, or am I absolutely insane? This detail initially seemed small to me at first, but once the thought process on it began, it felt like a well that went deeper and deeper. Like I said, it was something I touched upon briefly within Black Ops Cold War's life cycle, around the idea of a multiverse returning, but this time within the Dark Aether. And this can be the way it's achieved without it becoming a mess, and hopefully will lead to much more creative zombie map locations in the future, instead of every map just being some sort of military base. While well, Season 3 has just released, we won't get access to the Rift until mid-season, so we won't get an answer to this for a while, but when we actually get to play this mission, maybe we'll see the Earth in the distance, and we can pinpoint, yes, that's definitely the Earth, or maybe it's going to look radically different, and maybe we're going to think, actually it's another planet. Either way, this opens up the possibility of exploring so many different types of locations because even if there aren't multiple Earths in the Dark Aether like we think, we can still potentially go to other planets that I really want to see and hope that within Black Ops Gulf War Zombies that's something we do. Honestly, they may not even directly acknowledge not being on Earth even then, we would simply be left to discuss this until Gulf War's release, and that feels very Zombies to me. Our Mars are on an asteroid? Kinda crazy. Trek have just taken that Infinity War thing, flipped it on its head. So let me know in the comments if you think that this is possible, or what you think it means that bits of Earth's locations are seemingly floating in space, if not. And regardless of whether you think this is a legitimate theory or not, do you like this idea I am proposing? I definitely think it's something that Treyarch should work with in the future, given that this very well could be a possibility and would lead to some really crazy zombies maps. Anyways, this has been a long one, hopefully it made
made sense to you. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So, anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.